Hello, reader. Thank you for joining. This is the Christian Readers Community Podcast. On this podcast, we will be discussing with fellow readers and authors. You will never lack for good conversations and recommendations of Christian books. If you're a lover of literary works, fiction and nonfiction, then you have made the right stop here. Thank you for joining us again, and I hope you listen to every podcast that we get up to tell for you. Thank you. Sarah Hammaker loves writing books where the hero and heroine fall in love while running for their lives. She's written romantic suspense novels and nonfiction books, as well as hundreds of articles as a freelancer. Her indie published books frequently final and win awards, including the 2024 Holt Medallion winner for The Dark Reckoning and the 2023 Salah Fiction Book of the Year Award for The Dark Guest. As an Advanced Writers and Speakers Association Certified Writer and Speaker Coach, her heart is encouraging writers. She's a member of Christian Authors Network and American Christian Fiction Writers. Her podcast, The Romantic Side of Suspense, can be found wherever you listen to podcasts. A foster parent, Sarah lives in Virginia with her husband and four children. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Christian Readers Community. My name is Faith, and I have with me a multiple award-winning author with me, uh, Sarah Hamaka. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me back, Faith. Thank you. You know, I was just speaking with you um, late um, November 2023. And, you know, I remember one of the questions I asked you was, you know, when are we expecting the next book from you? Then you told me that you were, you know, working, you know, that you were, you were just, you know, marketing your book, your latest, which was um, a Christmas novella, Cold Case. And... You know, just for me to, I was like, okay, can't wait to see the next from you. And just for me to see on Facebook, that was in March, that you're looking for street team. You're looking for people who would join your street team. And I was like, what? When did you write this one? <laughs> that means you wrote a novel in a span of three months. Oh. Three months or two. <laughs> two. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I actually... Um, Justice Delayed was a book I wrote um, about four years, five years, and I I had tried to get it published traditionally. Uh, Some had been interested in it, but they ultimately decided not to publish it. So back when we talked in November, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And then I was praying about it and trying to figure out what was next. And I remembered that I had this book written, the whole thing. So I took a look at it and I thought, yeah, you know, this is not a bad book. (laughs) I kind of changed the series a little bit. Um, I had had it with a different series in mind. And then I really just do the... um, so this is book Justice Delayed is book one in the Seeking Justice series. And so that's why I was able to get it out so quickly is because I already had it written. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I was like, I was just like, wow, so fast, yeah. so fast. And I just I said, okay, I'm going to, you would definitely, you know, answer, you know, give me some answers because I just wanted to know how you were able to write such a beautiful novel. By the way, it was beautiful because um, I got to be part of your street team and wow, it was a beautiful book. I really enjoyed it. So tell us about Justice Delayed. Uh, And thank you for being part of my street team, Faith. I really appreciate that. Um, And if your listeners maybe don't know what a street team is, um, many authors ask avid fans, avid readers like Faith, uh, to be part of our team to help get the word out about the book around the time it's published. Um, They offer reviews, um, honest reviews. I always want to, I never want just nice reviews just because they're on my team. I want the honest reviews and they just help spread the word 
about your book. Um, so I was really thrilled to have such a wonderful street team for this book. Um, you know, like I mentioned, this book has been kind of on my heart for a while. I really love this story. Um, it's a story about um, a woman named Melinda um, Harmon. She comes from the Appalachian Mountains in Virginia. And her name um, was kind of fun for me to find. I did some research into some um, Appalachian Mountain names. Her last name is definitely one that um, was prevalent with people who grew up in the Appalachian Mountains. And I found her name and I just really loved it because it was a unusual and I think it spoke of her mountain heritage. And she is um, goes to prison she didn't commit, hence the Seeking Justice uh, series part of it. Um, and when she serves her time, she comes out and she wants to find the truth of what happened to her, um, her one-year-old cousin who disappeared and she was convicted of, of um, basically killing him. He was dead. So she teams up with a journalist, uh, Logan, who had took some shortcuts to try to get to the top of the journalistic field. Um, he made up some sources and that not, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> so he's trying to redeem himself and they come together. And, um, of course there's the love story. Um, and I always give a happily ever after. So spoiler alert, <laughs> they do get together, but how they get there is kind of, I think an interesting journey and they, reinvestigate the case together um, to find the answers. So that's kind of the story. And, and I think one theme that I had in this story was forgiveness. You know, how do you wrestle with a wrongful conviction as a Christian? Because Melinda is a believer. And how do you forgive? How do you work through that? What what if the answers you find are not the answers you expected? And, and how until that. Uh, so those were some of the things that I had my characters kind of work through in the in the book. So what inspired this book? I, you know, it's that's always a hard question for me, Faith, as a writer, because there's so many different ways that ideas come to me. Um, I can't remember exactly why this particular story kind of formed in my brain. Um, but it was one that I really, I really felt needed telling, um, again, because of that forgiveness aspect. And I wanted Melinda to have, be, stay strong in her faith, even in her difficult circumstances. And I think that's a message that we all need to hear. Um, we all struggle with things. There's always things as believers that we, that we find hard to handle, hard, hard things that happen to us um, and how we kind of deal with that. That was one thing I really wanted to tackle. And this story gave me a chance to, to, to tackle that, to tell that theme. Mm. Is this um, a standalone or are we going to see some of the characters in this, um, from the first book in the second one? This um, story, it, the mystery and stuff is all wrapped up in this book. So you can read this book and, now I hope you know. I hope you do read the next book in the series, but you don't need to to find out the the ending um, for um, Brogan and Melinda's story. Yeah, they will make a brief appearance in the next book. My hero for book two is Seth Whitman, and he makes an appearance. He's one of Brogan's um, colleagues on the newspaper they work on. So that's the tie. So you'll hear. Seth is the hero in book two, so I'm hard at work working on that. I'm not sure when I'm going to get that out, either the fall or early 2023. I mean, 2025. I forgot what year it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm hoping to finish finish the rough draft of that this summer and then um, look at my schedule and see when to get that out. But yeah, so you'll, Brogan makes an appearance. Melinda will make a brief appearance in book two. Um, but the focus will be on Seth and um, my new heroine, um, a woman named Jetta. So what about Melinda, uh, Melinda's um, 
aunt are we going to be you know hearing from her yeah you, you like the aunt and the uncle <laughs> yeah they were they were um <laughs> you know, i would like to i would like to know how you know things ended with her and uh, melinda because i felt like um, yeah i feel like i would still like to you know read more from more about them in the next book Yeah, I'm not sure that they were going to make an appearance, but I have thought about writing a short story about them, kind of maybe some of her story. Um and uh, Faith is talking about Melinda's aunt who is named Ruby. Um in this Yeah. It's delayed and yeah, I've thought about that. I haven't quite um figured out what I was going to do, but um yeah. I I liked her a lot so I I might do a short story. I've been I've been thinking about that. I haven't decided yet. Mm. So I've been reading a lot. I've been reading all your newsletters because I'm currently subscribed and um you know you've been winning lots and lots and lots and lots of award in last year and this year it's been wonderful and really congratulations to you. Oh, thank you so, so much. <laughs> yeah. And um, so when when do you find it best to write? Oh, um I usually like writing first thing in the mornings. So, um we're recording this kind of mid-morning, so I've already been working on my story first thing in the morning. I I like that, although I do have to write other times of the day as well if I want to get um if I want to get any work done. The summer definitely in the morning um during the school year i'm a tutor at a middle school so that's a little more difficult um to find time i'm still trying to figure that out but i do try to write something every day mm, so do you plot your stories or you just you know write as you go you know <laughs> i wish i plotted more <laughs> i uh i have um I have a hard time plotting because I'm never quite sure where the story is going to go. I usually have a pretty good idea of the the central mystery of the story. What are they trying to overcome? Um and I may or may not know and I ha- I'll have several potential villains in mind. Um Sometimes I know exactly like for Justice Delayed I was pretty clear from the beginning as to what the ending was going to be. Although I did add another layer of the mystery onto that. Um and I also like to write um I write romantic suspense which so there's danger to the direct danger to the hero or heroine throughout the story. But I also like them to not know who or why until the end. I like that kind of um hiding that a little bit. Uh I try to leave clues, you know, so you could kind of figure it out. And some people do, but I like to make it less known um because I think that's fun. I enjoy mysteries. Mystery. <laughs> yeah, I like keeping things mysterious. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Besides um Sarah Hamaka the 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 author who who are you? <laughs> who am I? That's a great question, Faith. Um well, I I'm a, a writer's coach. I love helping other writers um with their books. I love encouraging them um to finish their books. Uh that's one of my specialties. If you're having if you're a, if you're an author and you're having trouble finishing your book, I'm your coach to help you with that. I also um I'm a foster parent. So my husband and I take in foster kids. Um we currently don't have a placement right now. We had a long-term placement leave. Um but that's something we're hoping to continue into the future as well as God, you know, maybe brings other kids into our lives. Um I'm a mom. I have four children, uh two boys in high school and two girls in college. And yeah, I mean, I keep busy <laughs> like most of us. <laughs> yeah. You you also forgot to add that you have a podcast as well. Mm. I did. Thank you for mm-hmm. I do do a podcast. I do a podcast specifically about Christian romantic suspense authors. 
Um, what so, was the name? Uh, the Romantic Side of Suspense. So I have mm. the I have two different types of that podcast. One, I interview single authors and we have a conversation kind of like Faith and I are having now about their work. And then I also do one where I highlight all the that I highlight as many of the books coming out that month. Um, so the authors talk specifically about the books that are coming out um, each month, um, so which, which is kind of fun. It's, an, it's a fun way to have authors on again and they can, um, listeners can hear about that month's um, romantic suspense books. So that's been a lot of fun. Hmm. So tell us your website, YouTube channel, um, you know, your like you've already mentioned your uh, your podcast name. So tell us, you know, your your name on Amazon, where anyone can go either to connect with you either on social media or YouTube or your website. Uh, sure. Um, so you can find me anywhere under my name, Sarah Hammerker. My website is sarahhammerkerfiction.com. I'm on Facebook, author Sarah Hammerker. Um, I have a YouTube channel under Sarah Hammerker. Um, I'm on Instagram um, under Sarah Hammerker. It's basically my name, Amazon Sarah Hammerker. I, I'm, I'm glad I have a fairly unusual name, so it's, it's pretty easy to find me. <laughs> yeah, you have an unusual last name, but not an unusual first name. <laughs> that is so true, Faith. I know. You know, I will say when I was a kid, up until up until college, I grew up in a in a kind of small town, a small area. I didn't know anyone else named Sarah. Not until I went to college. Wow. I know. Are you serious? Yeah, I am serious. It was, I, I know there were other Sarahs out there. I just thought in my, my world um, wasn't that big. And then was, when I was a young adult on my own, there were so many Sarahs, little kids. So I, if I would be out, I hear someone call Sarah, I just started ignoring it because it was always some mom calling her little kid. <laughs> <So> my, <laughs> My friend, it used to drive my friends crazy. They're like, we were calling you and you weren't. I said, I thought it was some mom calling her kid, you know. So now there were a lot of heroes, but back then there wasn't so many. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh my! Anyway, Sarah, um, do you have your, do you have a copy of your book close to you? I do. I would like to hear an excerpt from your book. You can read any chapter. Ah, okay, sure thing. Let me see. I think I'll just do the first, the first one, because that's a that's a good one. So, sure. All right. Um, I should also mention one of the fun things about researching this book was Melinda has a family history and her own history of um, American folk songs. So that kind of plays. Oh, yeah. And I loved researching some of those and listening on YouTube to old recordings of those songs. So that was kind of a fun thing. Um, a fun little thing that I kind of was able to include in the book about her. Um, but anyway, that, I just thought that was fun. So here's an excerpt from Justice Delayed, Chapter 1. <clears throat> what time did the alleged robber come into your store, Mr. Patel? Northern Virginia Herald reporter Brogan Gilmore asked. Mid-August in the metropolitan Washington, D.C. area met slow news due, the, due to the congressional recess. Thus, an attempted robbery at a local convenience store took top priority. Excuse me. Vian Patel, owner of the Quickie Mart at the corner of Main Street and Chambridge Road in Fairfax, Virginia, rang up a customer purchasing a pack of cigarettes and beef jerky, then waited until the customer left before answering. It was 1.30 in the morning, very late. Standing on the other side of the counter, Brogan jotted down the details in his notebook. And you had two other robberies within the last two weeks? That's right, Mr. Patel clenched his fist. Those badamash young men. Badamash? Brogan interjected. Hooligans. Mr. Patel's lip curled, leaving Brogan no doubt that hooligans was probably a more civilized translation. 
They come in thinking they can just take my hard-earned money. Last Monday and Friday, different men came in late at night and take what isn't theirs. How much was taken in the previous two robberies? 300 on Monday, 1500 on Friday. Friday was very busy night. Special, special lottery promotion brought in lots of people who thought they would be lucky. Big jackpot. A shadow crossed the lines of his expressive face. Both times robbers came when I opened safe to remove cash for bank deposit. Usually no one here to open safe. A familiar gut feeling coursed through Brogan's body. Maybe these robberies weren't so random after all. This was looking more like an inside job. Do you open the safe for to ready the deposit at the same time each night? Mr. Patel shook his head. That would be foolish. I vary times each day. Sometimes right before bank opens, sometimes mid-afternoon, sometimes during the evening. When bank not open, I take deposit bag home with me. The Monday robbery was at 10 in the morning, the Friday one at 9 in the evening. Brogan tapped his pen against the notebook. Who worked on Monday? The doors bell announced more customers. A group of teenagers poured in, their raucous laughter filling the small store. Mr. Patel craned his neck to keep an eye on the teens. My son, Veer, working both times, he filling in for a worker who called in sick. The tingle increased. Is that spelled V-E-E-R? Yes. Mr. Patel greeted one of the teens who sat down a large slushie and a giant candy bar. Brogan waited while the owner rang up the group's remaining purchases. It could be a coincidence that Mr. Patel's son had been working during the two robberies. Still, at the risk of offending the man, Brogan had to follow up. Was Veer working last night? He was. He usually works overnight shifts on weekend to let me spend time at home with my wife. Definitely something there, but Brogan let the subject of Veer Patel drop for now. But you were here last night. Why was that? Mr. Patel shrugged. I was waiting until jackpot numbers were called at midnight. People buy lottery tickets in cash. Did you see the robber? Yes, but he wore a werewolf mask. Like a Halloween mask? Exactly. Other two robbers had similar masks. The werewolf robber, much shorter with lighter skin on his arms, his hand holding gun shook. Rogan writing furiously and gestured for him to continue. Then she threw a soda bottle, knocked him in head. Mr. Rattel's grin stretched wider. Rather than interrupt with questions as to who she was, Brogan let Mr. Patel finish his story. Miss Mel is such a little thing. I forgot she was here. She grabbed soda bottle and wham, clipped masked man inside of head. Brogan finished jotting down Mr. Patel's quote, then looked up. Who was Miss Mel? Did she knock the alleged robber out? No, but Miss Mel scared him. Robber ran out without money. Mr. Patel rang up another customer. I want to give her a bonus for quick thinking. Do you mean a reward? Maybe this story wouldn't turn out so bad after all. A regular customer thwarting a robbery in such an unusual matter would play well. He'd also do some digging into Veer Patel before he questioned the son. Something about Veer working during all three incidences was one coincidence too many in Brogan's book. Reward? Mr. Patel laughed. Yes, I will give her reward even though she's like an employee. Employee? Brogan frowned. I thought she was a customer. No, she cleans every Friday overnight. She works for you just one night a week? Didn't I just say? Mr. Patel called out a hello as a burly man walked in and headed straight for the fountain drinks. I hired company squeaky clean and they send her. First time she cleaned, I call manager and tell him to send only her. So she cleans my store once a week for six months. Very good worker. My, show, my store sparkles. Good for customer service. As Mr. Patel chatted with the burly man and rang up the customer's purchases, Brogan took the opportunity to check his phone for messages. Nothing. He wasn't expecting anything big to break, not with much of the greater DC area on vacation, but all he needed was that one story to catapult him back to the big leagues. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. I you you read so like uh, you know, you <laughs> I you know, you read so wonderfully. It's didn't even feel like you were reading. It felt like you were just doing a TV show. <laughs> thank you so. You're so kind, babe. Thank you. That was fun. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. And it's really felt nice getting to hear you pronounce those words um, by Mr. Patel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Badamash. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, was a, that was a fun one to look up so, and, and figure out. <laughs> is, is that an Indian word? Mm. It is an Indian word. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much, Sarah. And I would definitely love to have you back when you publish the third book. 
I will let you. Know. I hope. I, I hope when I invite you, you'll be willing to come again. <laughs> I would be delighted to return anytime, Faith. Thank you, thank you so much. And this is where um, we'll be stopping for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. And I was like, come away again next time. I'm saying, stay safe, stay blessed, and bye bye, everyone. Thank you.